Okay, well, um, this is the first in um, a few sessions that I'm going to do to paint a tray for you. And uh, I'm hoping that you can hear me. Oh, no, somebody can't hear me. Just a second. Okay, so I guess we're good to go. Sorry about that. We'll get a little bit more proficient as we move along. So the first, um, the first thing I'm going to do with these uh, these sessions is to start right at the very beginning. And what I want to do is kind of run you through my the mindset that I have while I'm designing a tray. Now I can tell you it's not very complicated, and it's not very difficult, um, and it's not rocket science. It's pretty simple, really. Um, on a tray like this, I, oh, it's rectangular and it has um, four corners, obviously, but um, I would use these four corners to give me a couple of guidelines. Um, I also see that it, there's a center here that's easy to find and a center here just based on the pattern on the um, pattern in the in the tray and so I probably do that as well I probably pull uh, a line across there and then I probably would just come down the center which would give me an idea of actually where the center of the tray is which is pretty obvious it's right here so that's the first thing I do when I have a piece is I take the shape of the piece and I let it give me a little help in what I'm about to do next um, after that, uh, normally I start with the, the flowers in the center of the tray. I try and keep the light towards the middle. This will be my light area. And I try and have everything get progressively darker as I move towards the outside of the tray. Um, I also try and put the main flowers, the largest flowers, so if I was doing roses or whatever, I probably group them in the center and then I put my leaves and any filler flowers and strokes would all go to the outside. Uh, normally I use uneven numbers. So for example, if I put a flower here, um, I probably then just put, put three flowers in. So I might put one here and one over here. Now I try and keep them kind of the same size, uh, but in reality, um, they're not really, as you can see. And also I don't normally do a lot of painting on my piece. I'll often find the center, but then I just start to paint and hopefully I get three in and they fit. Mm -hmm. lines are helpful as well because um, I can use them to to pull in other other flowers and leaves. For example, I'll just I'll draw a leaf in here, but I may not necessarily paint it later. But that I could put a leaf here using that line, I could put one over here, obviously. You can see that. So um, normally when I put leaves in, I'll do them just round circles because round is really the shape that I'm thinking of when I am I am painting. Um, so on this piece, I decided not to get too elaborate. I didn't want to paint flowers that you didn't understand or that would confuse you. So I'm going to keep it kind of simple. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do, but once I get my paintbrush going, I'll, I'll know. Um, so I just want to talk about these flowers again a little bit. Um, because I'm keeping the light in the center, I'm going to keep the fronts or the bottoms of these flowers towards the center so that all the light will be here. And as I move around and pull the strokes, Hopefully, it'll be dark towards the outside of the tray, so dark here and dark here, and again, keeping the light in the middle. Now, I am going to go through strokes in the building of flowers, but let me finish with talking about the design. Um, a lot of flowers, uh, you can have a flower like a daisy that has a, has a center and you see all the petals. Um, you also have flowers that have bowls like roses are most often painted while some of the petals are still formed um, up. And that creates kind of an opening in the top of the bowl. And 
I'm going to keep the openings in the backs, tops of flowers towards the outside, as I said, and this is going to be the opening. If you have a flower with a bowl, um, first of all, know that this shape is for all of the petals. This will be the outside petals, but this bowl shape that's in here is something like this. So if you were drawing a pattern for a rose or a chrysanthemum or anything that has, um, has a bowl, you could draw it like this and it's of great help because then you know how to pull your strokes um, and where to pull them to. So as far as the design goes, I'll put three flowers here. I'm probably going to put some filler flowers out here. I'll use those guidelines again to help me put them in, but I'm not going to put those in until I start to paint because I may throw in some leaves at the same time just to kind of balance out what I'm doing. So, you know, that's it for us, all the, the, uh, the, tech, <laughs> the technicality of the design, but let me just grab oh, this for you. I want to talk to you about the flowers themselves so that you have an understanding. Um, so like I said before, we have, we have uh, some flowers where you see the center or the stamens, the middle of the flower, and you have other flowers where you have a bowl and then you have the outside of that bowl. Um, this would be the opening at the top. Let's call this the stem here so you can kind of see where the flower is coming from. Um, we're going to pull strokes to create these flower shapes and the one thing you need to know about pulling strokes is where are they going? You don't even need to know what kind of stroke you're going to do in the first place, but you do have to know where the stroke is going to go. So if you have a flower like a daisy, for example, where you can see the center, where you'll paint the strokes is not to the middle of the center, which you see often. I suppose you could if it was perfectly flat, but rarely you'd see a flower perfectly flat. Um, but where you would pull the strokes is to a spot below or underneath that center or towards that stem line. On a flower that has a bowl, you'll do the same thing. Um, my center's in here, isn't it? That's where all the stamens and things are. And so the spot that I would paint the strokes to would be just below or under where that real center is, kind of towards the vein line. If you have a daisy, and it, let's just do this, there's the center, and you pull the strokes towards the middle, you get a flower that looks like this, which might make you happy. Or if you pull the strokes to a spot that's just below the center, then you get a totally different looking flower. And I'll just draw that in. I hope you can see this. And these would point to here. They wouldn't come because the, the center's there. So I'm not sure. I hope you can see this. Um, there's quite a difference between painting to the center of the flower and painting to a spot just below the center. So on a flower with a bowl, it's the same thing. I would paint my petals to this spot first. I would do all my petals coming around. I might put some petals in the side here, all of them pointing toward that spot. And then whatever I decide to do in the center would also relate to that spot. It might be uh, petals like this, or could be chrysanthemum petals. But all, everything would relate to that spot and guide my brush, guide every brush stroke. So um, I hope that's kind of clear, clear as mud, right? At any rate, um, so on, on the flowers that I'm going to paint for you, then that would make this the center or the spot, sorry, that I'll paint my strokes to here and here. Now, um, the first step in all of this process is going to be to paint the strokes in white. That's going to help me when I put color down because it'll be a white background instead of a black background. 
Um, I use a stay wet palette for all my acrylic work. Know that the first couple of steps will be done in acrylic paint and the final step that I'm going to do will be in oils. This is just uh, folk art titanium white and uh, I'll just put a little bit out on my palette here. Oh, it's got a few lumps in it. It's been a while since I used that bottle, but that'll be fine. Um, so I just want to talk to you about how to load your brush. Uh, I'll be working with, with a filbert. And you know, for stroke work, uh, for a lot of paintings, it doesn't matter what kind of brush you use. You can, you can get through it, your painting, with an old scruffy brush or pretty much any brand, any anything you want. But when it comes to stroke work, the brush has to be in really good condition or shape. Um, and it also has to be flexible. It has to move. Let me just show you here. I don't know whether you can see this or not, but if you look at when I press on that brush, look at the hairs kind of just dance. And so you need a brush that will do that where you when you're going to press put pressure on it it's going to it's going to work for you. The other thing is is after you release the pressure you want it to come back to a to a nice sharp chisel. The other thing about filberts is is again I don't know whether you can see this or not but this is a fairly round filbert and some filberts are almost pointed which I suppose is fine if that's the kind of shape you're going for but for this, I'd sooner have the rounded, the rounded edge. I like a brush that has a good chisel. Now I use these because the handle's fat and I have arthritis in my hands, so it makes it so much easier. I just want to talk to you about loading that brush for stroke work. Um, I pull the paint from the outside edge of the puddle. I don't know whether you can see this or not. I don't have a monitor going. Um, and I fill the brush with paint. I mean, I don't I don't just touch the paint. I fill it, I work it in, and the better uh, lubricated my brush is with paint, the more likely it's going to move the way I want it to when I, when I press on it. So if you can see this, you'll see how wide that brush will go when it's filled with paint. So I'll be using a filbert and um, that's what we're going to pull the strokes with. So before I do that though, I'm going to go back to this board and I want to talk to you a little bit about the stroke work. So I'm going to use a flat brush because it's easier for you to see. It's a large flat brush. This is a three quarter. It's easier for you to see the chisel edge of the brush. So if I'm pointing to or painting to a spot, there are two ways to paint to that spot. One is to have the chisel at right angles to the spot. You can see that the spot's there and the chisel is going this way. Or I could have the chisel pointing to the spot. So it's not exactly pointing, but it's pretty close. Um, and it's important to know that because on some of the strokes, we will be at right angles to this spot. If I was doing a C stroke, for example, and pulling towards the spot, you can see that I start at right angles and I'll come around and end at the spot. If I'm doing a comma stroke, for example, I might point to the spot and press and pull towards the spot. If I'm doing an S stroke, I might be at right angles to the spot. I'll pull it in over here, right angles. So I might come down and start with a, that's not finished S, or I could actually point and do one as well. So it's important to know the angle of the brush. One of my dogs is joining us. I was hoping they'd stay away, but um, the door is open because I thought it would be better to have them come down here than sit at the top of the stairs and whine. So again, um, the angle of the brush when you pull the stroke is, is really important. Just a little aside, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll hold this up maybe a little closer. There's a little bit of a highlight forming in that, that stroke that I just put in. And um, 
once you start painting with highlights, you, it's hard, almost hard to stop even if you're not trying to do a good job. That highlight's created when you press down on the brush, but when you release, you see it here? Can you see it here? When you release the pressure is when the highlight is actually applied to the stroke. So I'm not going to do too much more on that at the moment. We'll be talking about strokes all the way through. But just let me get my filbert brush ready here. Now, if you look what I'm doing, I'm actually, I had water in the brush and I don't want water in the brush. Um, it's better if the paint's a little bit thick, a little sticky for stroke work. If it's too loose, your brush won't work properly. So um, I just want to look at, let me look at this flower over here or this one. This was the daisy. If that's my spot and I pull a stroke towards the spot. I want you to notice that I did not go all the way. This is what I call wisping off the stroke. I also want you to notice that I applied a lot of pressure at the beginning of the stroke and then released the pressure as I move through the stroke. So it actually has a little bit of shape. Um, so the unfinished stroke in a minute you'll see is a good thing. Um, let me point now. Remember, I talked to you, either right angles or pointed. I'm going to point the chisel to that spot and simply pull another stroke up. On the other side, I'll do the same thing. Point, press, and in. Now, that, the strokes are a little long and they're a little far apart, but for the sake of explanation, that's fine. So I'm going to point again, and I'll point again, and I'll point again. And again and again and continue around this flower all the time with my brush pointed to the spot and then if I was putting a center in you can see now that that would fit quite nicely in there and the strokes actually look like they're belong to a real flower on this flower up here, um, we'll just do something a little different. There's my spot. I'm going to do, uh, I think I'll do like a C stroke. So that's chisel, press towards the spot. You'll notice again, the stroke is unfinished. I might do another one to fill in the space. And then I might pull another one the other way. I can put in, again, pointing now, a comma to the spot. I could put in another one to make the petal a little thicker. Pointing to the spot. Again, two strokes. Uh, I don't want to make this too difficult. I want to show you a C stroke. Right angles, remember, over here. This is right angles to the spot, so it's chisel and then press and go towards the spot, but you'll notice I didn't do much of a stroke at all. Um, I want to leave my bowl unaffected by the stroke. So here we are, right angles, and pull towards the spot. And I would run around this flower and pull similar partial C strokes, I guess. Again, all towards that spot, just wisping off. And what I've done is I've created the outside shape of the flower. The bowl, as I said, we could do almost anything with this bowl. It's in here. And um, I could paint over strokes or rose petals or chrysanthemums or whatever in that space. And I would pull strokes through here and you wouldn't see most of the ends of these strokes. So um, that's just a, a start on the, during the sessions, I'll be coming back to a lot of this. So on this piece, um, let's see now. Um, I think I'll do uh, maybe chrysanthemums or something. So this will be uh, a nest strobe, unfinished. And I'll add a comma to that. And you see, I go right to that spot. 
Well, that looks not bad. Okay, so I think what I'll do is another S stroke, but I'm going to start at right angles to the spot. So let's just see what that looks like. You see that? Just moved in to the spot, maybe a comma. You see how nicely that fills in the space? Um, I think I'll do another S, maybe this one pointing, and another comma. And I've pulled in the bottom part of a flower. You'll notice too, you can see all my highlights in here. That's because I press and release at the right time. Um, so let's just see what we're going to do with this. I um, think I'll do, I, I want to keep it simple. So you know what, we're going to do uh, like a chrysanthemum. So in that case, I'm going to fill the bowl in next. Normally I go around the sides. But uh, with a chrysanthemum, in order to get the shape, it's probably easier for me to fill the bowl in. So at right angles to that spot and grabbing the edge of that open bowl that I put down, I'll press and pull towards the spot. The rest of the strokes, as I work around the edge of this open bowl, will point to that spot. So see my chisel pointing to the spot. I'll just touch press and pull around. Uh, sometimes it's easier to pull strokes towards yourself and sometimes it's easier to pull them away, except if you're painting a wall, of course, then you've got a bit of a problem. Uh, but when you've got something like this that you can move around, so I'll point. Oh, I didn't want to really do that. I'll do it that way. And I don't think my bowl is big enough, but we'll come over here still pointing. Do you see that? And I'll pull around this side, pointing and around this side. Now, for the time being, I'm going to leave that and I'm going to come back in here and pull some strokes to fill in that space. So again, everything moving towards that spot. Pointed, touch, press towards the spot point, touch, press, and away you go. So that gives me a little bit of a flower shape. Now around the back, I probably need the suggestion of a petal here and the suggestion of a petal here. And then I need to create the top back of that flower, but comma, it's not a very round bowl, is it? So I would come back and continue to pull strokes just like these or partial and I'll pull them as if they're coming around the petal. So let me just hold this this way and I think that will be fine for one of the flowers. So I'm going to do one more because I don't want to be the video to be too long. I want people to watch it and re-watch it without having to go on for hours. So um, over here, I'm going to do basically the same flower. So some of it may be hidden by this because I've got these circles pretty close together, but that's okay. So there's an S and a comma. Let's do S, comma, and pull one there. I don't like this very much. Sometimes we cheat and we fix the shape a little. This has got to come here. Oh, let's see. No, sorry. This is what happens when you're painting and you're not using any reference. I think what I'll do is here. Okay, let me tell you what's going on in my head. I want to do three flowers and I want them to be the same flower. So they're all going to be chrysanthemums, but I don't want them all to be identical. I want each one of them to be somewhat different than the other. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So just uh, if you bear with me, you'll see Hopefully, that that's going to happen in a second here. So again, now I'll 
I'll do the strokes that would be around the bowl. And go to the back and pull them in. So they're not the same, um, but they're similar. I'm still not happy with what's going on here, but you know what? It'll fix itself as I move through the process. Um, I also think that I'd like to have another petal that kind of sticks out here. Why? Just because it didn't look balanced to me. So when you paint something and maybe you don't put the stroke in the right place, you're not stuck. Like, fix it. Do whatever you want to it. Um, okay, I'm not going to paint the third one now. I'm going to paint that off camera and you'll see it next time you tune in. Um, or will I? Oh, you know what? I might as well do it because um, I'm going to leave the video there. I'm not doing leaves today. Leaves are a whole lesson in themselves. So let's let's finish this. Let's get this other flower on. So let me just see where I want to put it now because I'm a little off balance here. I'm going to put my spot up in here. So let's just, I want to fill in this space here. Do you see that? So that these are connected. There we go. And that's an S. And that's a comma. And that will be an S. And maybe another S. And then a comma to finish it off. And then I think I'll do my center next. That'll help me to keep it the right shape. So I'll grab the edge of that bowl. Do you see that? And you'll notice the strokes are not finished. I really don't want them to be finished at all. You'll see why in a second. So then I'm going to have strokes to the back here. So now I can come back and I think I'll do partial C stroke here and I'll put another one here to finish off the shape and just throw some strokes back there and here again partial C and another one and that will finish off that flower. Now obviously there's lots left to do um, but I want you to see something before we finish off with this. By leaving the strokes unfinished, the black shows through, obviously, and the areas that you see that are dark are actually the areas that would be shaded in the flower when I paint it. So it makes my life a lot easier. Um, so I'm going to leave this at, at this stage today. I want to keep the video short. Uh, on the next session, I will put all of the leaves in and any filler flowers that we're going to, to have. And we'll also talk about the strokes again. And then hopefully um, on the next session as well, I'll get my first layer of color in, which only takes a minute and it's uh, mindless really. So thank you if you join me. Um, I hope this video turned out because I have no monitor, so I'm, I'm talking to the blind here. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Put some comment under the video and I'll, I'll answer them. Um, if this wasn't clear, I, uh, I tried to make it as simple as I could. And again, we're not done with the strokes. We'll be running through strokes every time I, I do them. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. We're probably looking at about a week and a few days, um, March break next week. So I'll be away with my grandkids. And uh, but the following week, uh, we'll do a session uh, probably on a Tuesday. And the week after that, we'll do another Tuesday. So let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comment area. And I will get back to you with answers as quickly as I can. 
So thanks for joining me. I hope this turned out. You take care. Bye-bye.